In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install your Bally custom-made roller blades. Now, you've probably ordered these through your big box store. They're going to ship them to your house. You're going to open up the box. You're going to look through the instructions and be totally confused. You're going to have about six or seven, maybe more, kind of instruction sheets on all different ways to mount these. Um, if you have a valence like this one does, you're going to have another instruction sheet on that. Now, a lot of the install is going to depend on how deep your jam extension is. Now, I've got one more window left to install in the house. I'm going to show you this last one I just did. I did a little bit of customization when I did them in my home. I wanted the valence as tight as I could get it uh, to the trim, so I didn't use the dust cover. So we'll go over all that. I'll give you some tips on what I've learned through installing these throughout my home. And hopefully by the end of the video, this will make it a little bit easier for you to install them. And you won't even need to look at those instructions. So let's get started. I'm going to give you an up close look of the last one I just did. As you can see, you can see no mounting hardware at all. This is an inside mount. I think this looks a little bit better. It looks a little more custom to the home than if you were to install this outside the trim. Especially if you have nice looking solid oak trim. Here's a look at the valence. As you can see, I've got it really close to the trim work. Now, if you have a large jam extension, uh, you can use the dust cover and you can get it in a little closer. Uh, but the jam extensions on this window is a little bit small, so I had to kind of custom make uh, the bracket. I'll bring it around here to the side, as you can see. You don't want that valence sticking way out. It just doesn't look very well. And if I bring the camera in like this, you can barely see any of the mounting hardware other than this bracket right here. And I've got it kind of set flush with the jam extension. So that when you're looking at this, it looks totally custom. It doesn't look like there's any kind of mounting hardware holding it up at all. Fit and finish looks really nice. So we'll get started on a fresh install. So this is the last window in the house that I'll be doing. As you can see, the Bally custom roller shades are going to look a lot better than these old curtains we just got hanging up. We just pretty much strung a rubber band through the top of them to block off the window so no one can see inside while we waited for our custom roller shades to come in. Talk about the jam extension. That's gonna be this piece of wood right here. It's gonna be from your window to your trim. Now the jam extension here is about two and a quarter inches. So if you have a really deep jam extension, your mounting might be slightly different. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you the difference in mounting the valence with the dust cover and without. So this piece right here is what's referred to as the dust cover. And this bracket right here is what mounts your valence. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount the valence on here and show you what that looks like in the window. So what it looks like with the dust cover mounted to the valence and then this would screw up into your jam extension so we'll go ahead and put it in the window show you what that looks like that would fit up into your jam extension like this and you're going to mount it flush up against the window now as you can see how far out this valence sticks from the trim it's almost two inches out i'm going to bring the camera around the end so you can see that a little better so this is where the difference in the jam extensions are gonna come in. So since these are short jam extensions, that's how far the valence would stick out. If you do have a large jam extension, what you would do is just put your screws right up through there and that's what holds your valence and dust cover on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna still use the same bracket to hold the valence on. I'm just gonna screw the bracket right up to the jam extension because I cannot cut the dust cover down. I want this valence close to the trim. I don't want it sticking out. So this is how I get it close. Now, if I want to get it closer, like I did over there, what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to cut off about a half inch of this bracket. And that will allow me to go even deeper and bring the valence closer to the trim. So what I'm going to do to shorten this depth, I've got some aviation shears. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this last hole off. Just like that. And now I've shortened up the bracket. 
And now I can put it in the jam extension and get that valence closer to the trim the way I want it. Now I've snapped my bracket into the valence cover. I've got it cut off and I'm going to hold it up inside the jam and mark the screw locations. So you can hold your valence up in place. You're going to even it out on the ends. So there's maybe like a eighth inch gap, maybe a sixteenth inch gap. And then as you come inside, you're just going to use like a black sharpie and mark where your screws are going to go in. And then we're going to go ahead and pre-drill the holes. So you're going to take a 1 16th diameter drill bit and go ahead and drill your holes. Now we're not going to mount the valence yet. We just have the holes pre-drilled so it's easier to mount it later. Now we're going to go ahead and mount the side brackets that actually hold the roller shade. Now depending on the depth of your jam extension will determine how you want to mount your side bracket. If you have a deep jam extension you could mount it this way. As you can see this sticks way out past my trim. But I can turn it this way and have it flush inside which is how I'm going to mount it. So determine which way you want to mount your end brackets. And here's your end bracket. This is your end bracket spacer. You're going to snap that together. So it looks like that. And now we have a decorative cover and I'll show you how that mounts. So once you have your bracket mounted in place, you can install this decorative cover and it's going to go on like this. You're going to kind of push it in place and you're going to want to push this down as you slide it on. You can see right there it's not installed correctly. I'm going to slide this out, push down, and see how now it's flush inside. That's how it should look once it's totally installed. So now we need to mount the end brackets. So I'm going to hold it up where I want it. I'm going to use my Sharpie to mark my hole locations to drill. But you're going to want to make sure that you have clearance from the front side to your valence and from your back window to the bracket. You should have at least a quarter of an inch clearance front and back to allow clearance for your roller shade. We've got our roller shade mount into place. And now I'm going to slip on the decorative cover. Remembering when you push this up, you want to push this down so it doesn't rise up on top of you. I'm going to push this down, push this up. Pops right in place. Looks nice and neat. We'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. All right, so I've got the other end screwed into the jam. Now I'm going to push on the decorative cover. Just remember pushing down on the metal so it goes underneath the plastic end. Just like that. Now if you look at my brackets, they're pretty well flush with the outside of my jam. We've got both end brackets in place. Now we can mount the valence. That's why we pre-drilled the holes. We're going to go ahead and mount this. Now if it isn't exactly centered, this will slide on your brackets, so don't worry too much about that. But we're going to go ahead and put the screws in. That will hold the valence in place. And then we can slide the roller shade up underneath. If you put the roller shade in first, you'll never get the screws in for the brackets for the valence. So the valence goes on next. Alright, so at this point the valence is mounted. And if you look here on the end, the valence is pretty well even with the jam. I'll just bring this under here. You can see my bracket, which is right there. Now the bracket is set in about five inches. If you look at the valence from here to the bracket, I have my bracket set in about five inches from the end. So now we're ready to mount the roller shade. Do not remove this paper until this thing is fully mounted. Now it doesn't matter which end you stick in the mounting bracket first, they're both spring loaded. So you can go, you can push it in on the right side first or the left side first. But you're pretty much going to get it into the mounting, uh, it's kind of a hexagonal 
uh, piece there on the end. Get it in there in one end. You're going to push in on the full shade. And then on the other end, you're going to push this end in with your finger while pushing up. So it's going to kind of just follow the little groove on the mounting bracket. This end into the mounting bracket and I'm going to push in on the roller shade. And I'm going to push in on this end with my finger. And there I just heard it all snap in place. And now you can remove the paper straps on both ends and this taped foam in the middle. All the paper strapping removed. So before you just grab this and yank down, grab hold of the roller and just kind of wiggle it around a little bit and make sure it is definitely locked in place. If you just grab this and yank it down, this whole thing will fall down if you don't have these securely locked in place. You should have felt a good positive click on both ends. Okay, so if you installed your shade correctly, you should have about a quarter of an inch gap on this side and this side. It should be nice and even from the jam to your roller shade. The gap up there on your valence, the same on both sides. The valence nice and tight to the wall. And it should work by just lifting and pulling down. No weird noises. Now the last thing we need to do is vacuum up the little bit of sawdust that was left from drilling the holes. And then this project is complete. Hope you guys found this video helpful and informational. I hope it was definitely better than the instructions that came along with your Bally roller shades. Thanks for watching.